During the Cold War era, the KGB, the former Soviet Union's equivalent of the CIA, ruled using cutthroat rings of highly trained intelligence operatives. During this period, the Soviet arms count was estimated at over 40,000 nuclear weapons. Because of the breakdown of the Soviet Union and its KGB, over 250,000 skilled Soviet spies strategically planted around the world suddenly found themselves out of work. However, for many of the displaced agents, it was still business as usual, as many of those unclaimed 250,000 spies were children, an enemy invisible to nearly any defense mechanism. Get in and get out. What do you think this is, some kind of game? Devin snarled. I just thought I'd do the thinking. All you do is what I say, Devin coldly replied. Garrett was silent. He looked into the boss's cold eyes and saw no understanding, no mercy, and no patience. There was no compassion between the two men. In and out, sir, was Garrett's meek reply, but it was just an act. There was no fear in Garrett's heart. Take teams A and F and complete the operation, Devin said. You will signal man three at 9.15 a.m. Enter the facility at 9.18. Expedite the operation exactly as planned and exit at 9.21. Are there any questions, Mr. Garrett? The boss's tone told him there had better not be. No, sir. Good. Team A will be waiting for you at the designated rendezvous point. The truck will be with them. Nightshade leads Team F at your signal. She already has the keys in her possession. Dismissed. Yes, sir. Garrett turned to leave. Garrett. Yes? One more thing. Teams A and F are to be totally oblivious to each other. Is that understood? Of course, sir. Sorry, everyone. That Pulitzer competition belongs to me. Dorian Valentine exclaimed on her way to work. As she walked past the doors of the elevator, she received a standing ovation and she welcomed it. Thank you. Gosh, thanks. Thank you. Dorian, some people are here to see you in the boss's office, said Frederick Carson, one of her co-workers. What? The Pulitzer is here already. Good morning, Miss Valentine, a stranger in a gray suit said. He stepped in close and locked his arm in hers. He then started to walk quickly, leading her to the editor-in-chief's office. In a separate windowless van parked on a Washington side street, Kalisa Leonilla, known to her team as Nightshade, rebriefed Team F on the operation at hand. All right, take a good look at this picture. Nightshade instructed. Everyone and everything else is expendable. Get your hands off of me. What is going on? And who the hell do you think you are putting your hands on me? I ought to pick up the phone right now and call my attorney. You better start explaining yourself right now. Sit down, Dorian, one of the men said. I'm fine, standing. Miss Valentine, we are from the CIA, he continued. This is about the article you wrote that is printed in this morning's paper. I'm sure you know you've created absolute congressional pandemonium. Just doing my job. And what's your name? Valentine was cut off by the sounds of terrified screams coming from outside. Get down, Turner yelled to Valentine. Clack drew his piece. Automatic gunfire was heard over the screams, followed by shattered glass and chaos. Dorian Valentine, 